Hey everybody, Captain CA here for Flats Class YouTube and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to do one of our more popular segments and that's top five baits for this month. That's right, January creates certain challenges and I'm going to show you how to overcome them. Let's go to the shop. Okay, everybody, it was 38 degrees this morning and the water temperature in my neck of the woods, I live, you know, Citrus County, almost Marion County, actually, I'm at the top of the county. And just to, to give you kind of a, a benchmark of where I like to fish so that other folks in the rest of the state, or if, if you can relate to it in Texas or the Carolinas, um, I fish everywhere from Pasco County, which is to, uh, just a little bit north of Pinellas County. And I fish all the way up to Taylor County, which is in the Big Bend region here on Florida's west coast. So we are above the frost line and we do have chilly water temperatures this time of year. So that being said, that really was instrumental in me picking my top five. See here in, in my area or, or the state of Florida in general, we really only have, and I know the state goes all the way to the Florida Keys and they don't really have any frost or winter weather, but um, for most of us in the state, if you're, you're a little bit, you know, from, I'm gonna say Sarasota on the west coast and maybe drive across to Melbourne on the east coast and you go north, we literally do have a little bit of winter and it usually starts toward the end of December and it usually lasts till about the first week of March, maybe the second week. And then the fronts get further and further apart. So right now my water temps are fairly consistently in the 50s. So my January top five are going to be smaller baits. Um, none of them are gonna weigh really, and this one over 5 sixteenths of an ounce because I've altered one of my 3 8 baits. And they're all going to be generally baits that you have to work slow. So you're going to be working them slow on white line. And, and I chose colors that were more match the bottom. Fish are sitting lower uh, on the days that are fishable for most of us, which are the days post front. So they sit tighter to the bottom. Oftentimes they're in deeper water in the mornings and then they move shallow in the afternoons to warm up. And that's usually when you pop them or you catch them. So let's break it down. We're going to start with number five. I put them in no particular order, okay? So don't think I'm ranking them. But uh, number five, we're going to start off with the TRD Cross. I want to talk about this bait and how I rig it uniquely. All right, I, I work this TRD Cross literally on a one-sixth of, a, of an ounce. It's more of a mushroom head. This is in the headlocks um, lineup, but I rig it so that it's a little bit more weedless. This time of year we have a lot of tailing redfish or I fish these creek systems that kind of sprawl through most of the Spartina and you'll find these wide spots where it's real sandy and these reds will just be kind of just moving around in that current, whether it's going in or out. And it's nice to be able to launch something this light. Now, one sixth of an ounce for you guys that are not math geniuses, okay? That's less than a quarter, okay? But it's more than an eighth. So one sixth, don't let it throw you off. It's probably really three sixteenths. All right, the TRD cross for me, or actually it's probably this one is probably with the, with the lure on it, it's probably close to a quarter when you add the plastic, if you weigh it on the gram scale. Now, what do I like about this bait? Let me give you a closer look. I'm gonna come up next to the camera because I got a unique camera angle today. So let me come up close to the camera. All right, the way I have it rigged on this is I've kind of buried the point. So I'm gonna take it completely off and show you the jig head first. Here's the jig head. This is, this is a headlocks jig head, okay? That's the jig head, 
right there. And then this is like a little two and three quarter inch long bait. But you'll notice these bulbous claws. Yes, this is a bass bait. The way I rig it is I come in the head here and out the bottom like I'm going to have it on an extra wide gap hook. Okay. I push it over the keeper, which is that little head locks. And I push it in between there and the actual head of the jig. If you'll look there closely. Okay. See it? It acts almost like a chin locks. And then I stick it through the bottom of the bait. I want it to say crawfish shell. And I leave the I leave it where the tip is almost out, but not quite. Can you see that, guys? You see it? Barely out. It gives this a posture where it's up, okay? And these bulbous claws here will float up in the water. So as I bounce it along and let it fall, these float up in a defensive posture. And it really makes a huge difference when I'm fishing for tailing redfish. These little TRD crawls, this is the hot crawl color, which is easy for me to see on that, on that sand when I throw it to the fish. And trust me, with this fine wire hook as I have here with these Z-Man pieces of terminal tackle, it's easy to get a positive hook set. All right. Cool, cool little, cool little deal. I mean, these things are two and a half inches long and they look, they really look like little fiddler crabs on the bottom. So in the creeks or in some click kit places where you have mangrove crabs or, or mud crabs on mud flats, these are really good baits this time of year. And I don't know how popular it is to throw freshwater baits where you live for, uh, for wary redfish, but I can tell you personally, the worm baits that I've thrown and a lot of the creature style baits that I've thrown, they, they simply catch. They just simply catch fish. Um, so this works really well for me. It's one of my favorite deals. And because the overall weight, it's a small compact bait, it allows me, even on a bait caster, to throw this a decent distance. So that's bait number five. Uh, bait number four is a bait that I worked on with Heath Hipple out in Texas. Staying with the Ned theme, this is actually the Ned bug, okay? And I'll give you a closer look at this one too. The Ned, the Ned bug really weighs three sixteenths of an ounce. So you're gonna have to throw this on probably eight pound line in most cases. But the, the secret to this bait is I can work it in that checkered bottom where you have a little bit of grass here and there. And it stands up a lot like the Z-Man Elastec material. He's got the exact same head. He's got a, a good, decent weed guard. I'll just open this one up for you. Um, actually, let me bring it to you so that you can see it first in the package with the packaging and you can recognize it. Then we'll talk about it. Let me come over there. All right, here's the packaging, okay? It, it's one sixth of an ounce. It's something that we worked on him uh, with Heath on, on him, with him. Um, and it's, it's one of those types of, uh, everyone knows I'm a fan of throwing bucktail jigs, but I'm gonna slide this out because it's such a shrimpy looking bait, shrimpy and crabby. You, you can see the antenna on this thing, and they're so alive in the water. They just move. His hair breathes. He does such good ties. Got the rubber legs on here. And you'll see that it's got a weed guard. So I can bounce it around, and it almost always ends up like this on the bottom. It really does. This is a, a really solid choice, um, in my opinion for the cooler months. Or if you're just fishing for spooky redfish in general, this really gets the job done. It's an awesome sight fishing bait because you don't have a lot of material in this that makes noise when it hits the water. All you have is that jig head. Now there is, if you look real close in here, um, now this one doesn't have the rattle in it, but some of the bugs jigs have rattles in them. This one does not, this one's silent. 
because we throw it a lot in the, uh, the, sh the clear shallows. But a bait like this, um, for me, will catch fish after fish. If you look, there's a good quality hook in there. And just enough weed guard, just enough to keep it clean. But uh, again, you're gonna have to throw this on really light line, okay? And you're going to have to work it slow, more with the rod tip and then let it rest, more with the rod tip, then let it rest. And it just, it's one of those baits that gets overlooked, but for those that have discovered it, I know guys down in South Florida that are catching bonefish on this bait. So look at that Ned bug. It, it truly is a getter. It'll get you some bites. Now let's talk about the next bait. Okay, bait number three. Bait number three is a hard bait from Miralor. It's the 17MR, and I chose more of a tannic back creek um, color, maybe a, a, a residential dock zone or something like that, where you have that darker, muddier bottom. You're trying to mimic um, small fin fish, mud minnows, things like that. And it's that black and gold color that we jokingly called little Wayne on my website, but I've made an alter alteration to the bait itself. So this bait uh, typically weighs three eighths of an ounce because it has some stock hooks on it that are a little heavier wider. Well, I've taken the liberty of changing them out with these Mustad. These are the Mustad KVD. Uh, these are the triple grip hooks. They're an extra wide gap hook. And what it is, is instead of this typical round bend, there's nothing wrong with round bends. At times, round bends are better than these. Um, they probably have better hooking power initially. But what happens is the bite is so slow this time of year. It's just slow. If you can get them to pop this and they get on, they don't get off because the point of the hook goes back toward the connection point. And if they get on, they can't roll off. Uh, and it's a little wider gap between the point itself and the shank of the hook, where it connects to the split ring. Uh, it also comes in, I mean, just a scant lighter than this one. So honestly, this is probably closer to 5 sixteenths than it would be 3 eighths, which means on the sink, it's gonna sink slower than it does with the stock hooks. I'm not saying anything's wrong with the stock hooks. If you don't want to change them out, that's fine. Continue to use the bait. I'm just saying that if you do change them out, you can alter the sink rate of this bait. And uh, this one, because of that dot scale pattern, oh, let me bring it closer to you. That dot scale pattern, you can see right here. With very little movement, it's going to catch a ton of light. And uh, you can see those hooks on there that I put on the MR-17. I mean, I'm telling you right now, if you're going to fish residential canals, if you're going to fish the deeper part of the creek, um, or up along the sunny edges on the flats in the afternoons around rock, give this one a try. This, this is the month to try this one with the lighter hooks. I promise you, you won't be disappointed. Now let's go to bait number four. Not really four, I should say bait number two, second from the top. This is a bait that's been getting a lot of run since it came out about a year and a half ago. And that is the Salty Ned Shrimps. Now this is a small, small, I mean it is literally two and a half inches long. And I put it on a one, 15th of an ounce. This is a, a finesse bullets. So it only weighs total weight one eighth. That's with the plastic on. So you're going to have to throw it again on eight pound, maybe even six pound to really get a lot of distance with this. And it's going to have to be on a lighter action rod. Now that rod could be seven, at least seven feet long so that you can get some distance. Um, but I, I have fished this a ton in dock lights. Uh, does a good job swimming in dock lights. But this one is one that I do throw 
in those sandy creeks, in those, in those clean spots. And I do throw it if I'm down in Pasco on those big turtle grass flats where they have these big like sand voids. We call them potholes here. Um, in Texas, you guys have those guts that run between islands or along islands. That's where this comes in, where you can let it fall slowly to the bottom, pop it a couple of times with your rod. It'll pop off the bottom and then it will sink slowly swimming kind of down because this tail is just wide enough to give that that really slow feel to it. When I fish in the creeks, I usually throw it down the creek past the zone where I know the fish are and I usually just bump it along, take a turn, bump it along because really a lot of the 2500 series or 3000 series reels depends on the brand, depends on the model. They can take up as little as 31 inches to as much as 37 inches in that class. So you have to pay attention to that. Don't pay so much attention to the gear ratio on spinning gear the way you do with casting gear. Pay attention to how many inches are picked up per handle turn. That's more important. But this is this is really a kick-ass bait. It honestly is. Let me let me bring the packaging up there to you and give you a closer look. All right, here's the packaging. Nice, small, compact bait. Two and a half inches long. There's a theme here. I told you there would be. Everything's little. Here's the bait itself, okay? You can see it. It is a good-looking little bait. Now, they do make these, these little finesse bullet rigging pieces, you know, in heavier sizes so that you can throw it on 10 pound braid uh, and on a little bit, you know, not as light action rod. So you can get these things as heavy as I believe a quarter, but it just does, it does such a good lifelike impression when you can throw this on the 1 15th size or if you can throw it on the 1 10th size. And they're pretty snag proof, really, the way they've, they've, They've integrated that line tie into the head of the bait. Uh, Z-Man was really smart there. They listened to a lot of their pro staff and they've got them on the right path with this bait. If you've, if you've been paying attention, like I said, on YouTube lately, a lot of the guys that are fishing for spooky redfish, they're catching them on these. So the Salty Ned Shrimp, number two. Now I'm going to take you to the number one bait. Um, that I think you can universally make happen for yourself. The number one bait, and I fished it a lot. We even did a TV show on it uh, last year on Flats Class Television. Is is the trick shots? Okay, and trick shots comes in some really fantastic earthy colors that have some flake in them. I throw this a lot in both rocky zones, sandy zones, grassy zones. And I, I do leave the jig head out of it. Now I'm throwing it on a football jig. This is a BMC football jig. And they're kind of pricey, really. You only get four pieces for about five bucks. They're about a buck a piece. But I guarantee you, because of the shape of the head and where the line tie is, it will land and stand up. And because this part of the body is thinner to that big flappy tail, it brings that tail straight up. So when I pop it off the bottom and it comes back down, that tail just kind of swims and then it comes up and just waves. And it's like a flag, I'm telling you. I could not believe how effective it was last year. Here's the second part of this bait that I really love. If you look real close, and I'm gonna bring it up there, there's these, these deeper ribs that give this bait almost a sonic sound to it without adding a rattle to it. <laughs> as you rip it through the water if you're ripping it a little faster. But you can add Procure scent. Now, when you add Procure scent, which is, is basically a fish oil based, rendered down natural scent product, actually. I just did, if you, I'll have my guys put in the, uh, the description, the link to that particular video. But when you add it to a bait like Elastec, which is a, a proprietary uh, 
way that they cook this stuff, it, it behaves like a sponge. So if you stick that gel in these ribs, you literally can put it in there and you can go 60, 70 casts working it slow before you got to do it again. Because you'll be able to put it up to your nose and you'll know it's there. Let me show you this. Let me show you this bait. I'll show you the packaging as well. I'll come up there and show it to you. Great little bait. And for those of you that remember last season on Flats Class, we fished this bait in some challenging conditions and caught fish. Here's how I have it rigged right here. I'm going to try, try to hold this where you can see it. Okay. And you can see, you see those little ribs there? And how thin that tail is and that flapper. This bait has a lot of action. And if, again, if you've got finicky fish, want to cover a little bit more water, want a little snappier pop off the bottom, the trick shots. Uh, it's basically another bass style um, bait that they use a lot for, for drop shotting and stuff. But I have found it particularly effective on redfish and flounder. So, let's go back and, and think about this a little bit. All these baits are small. And why? It's January. They gotta be small. They gotta be small, they gotta move slow. So even the Miradine, which most of you work at a caffeinated pace, it's just going to be twitch, twitch, and wait, and let it slowly sink. By the time you go to hit it again, there'll be a fish there. You won't have to do anything. All of these baits can be fished on very light line. Um, and trust me when I tell you this. If you really want to know something that I do a lot, especially when I trout fish this time of year, I've been using either fluorocarbon or I'll use something like a copoly line. This is a, a you know, fluorocarbon's monofilament too, really. You guys just don't know it, but it is. But on some of my casting gear, or a lot of it this time of year, this is what I have on there. Just so I can use 12 pound and then tie a short piece of bite tippet of maybe, maybe 15 or 20 if I think I need it. Thank you. I think you guys saw a video last week where I caught a snook that was close, pushing like 28, 29 inches. And I had it on 10 pound fluorocarbon leader that was like four foot long. And then I just had a little short section of 15 pound. And that's because I wasn't expecting to catch a snook. Now, what kind of tackle are you going to be looking at to throw this stuff? You're going to be looking at real parabolic rods that bend See how far down this bends in the blank? It literally bends almost, almost down to the second guide. So it's real limber. I mean, super, super limber. This is a medium light seven foot. This is in the Fitzgerald rod lineup in their aqua fins. Uh, does a fantastic job. I have it paired up. This is a Shimano 2000. This is the Banford, super light. I've got actually 10 pound on this. But like I said, I will drop down to 8 pound. This is 10 pound diamond ice white. But I will drop down to some really light stuff once I start moving into uh, these nets. Because you have to. It's the only way to cast them. But this is a good, a good net rod here for me. Um, medium light, 7 foot. Uh, it still has a fast enough tip. The line weight. Uh, rating on this rod is 5 to 10 pounds, so I'm right at the top of it with this. It throws everything from a 16th to a half ounce. Um, and everything I've showed you here is 5 16ths or less. So if, if you're looking for some really steady action this time of year, I'm going to say you've got to consider baits like these. Now, I'm not telling you you have to throw this stuff. I'm not pitching you to sell you any. There are a lot of brands that make profiles and make Ned style baits like this. These are the companies that I have relationships with that I trust and they catch fish for me. You do whatever you need to do. If you're a Rapala guy, fish a Rapala Twitch bait. If you're, I don't know, I, I can't even think, Berkeley guy, fish a Berkeley bait. But, but for me, I like to bounce around a little bit with these and experiment. And I have played with a lot of non-partner brands just to see what their stuff does 
And when it gets really cold out and it really like stiffens up typical plastic baits like paddle tails and stuff like that, the Z-Man stuff, well, it doesn't fail you. Okay, like I say every episode of Flats Class YouTube, if you enjoy what you're learning here, really enjoy it, and you're taking it to the water and you're catching fish, do me a favor, give us that thumbs up, like this channel, share it, comment down below, tell us what you want to see, and uh, subscribe. We want you to subscribe to the channel. I'd love to have you in my classroom every week. We do three uh, or four lessons a week, and then we have a bunch of shorts that drop. Uh, we just recently had an interview here with Captain Blair Wiggins, so uh, if you want to watch some of our Tidewater Diary podcasts, or if you want to watch the show, uh, you can watch the TV show and see how we do things on the show. Lateral Media, they do a great job for us. Okay, until next time, I've, I appreciate y'all sitting here with me and learning something. Until next time. That's all I can say. Until next time.